it's been a real great pleasure to uh, get to work at Loyola University um, uh, with Mike, Father Mike, and, this, and I think my younger brothers would say the same about that. Um, Father Mike and I go back, we're both uh, St. Louis uh, Italian American kids. Um, Mike is a, a faithful son of Ignatius, and um, he would love the poem Gerard Manley Hopkins, um, As Kingfisher Catch Fire. And I want to start with that because I think that in some ways that could maybe be a meditation on the way that I think uh, the way Father Mike understands justice, or at least the way I see him understanding justice and working in justice. I don't know if you know the poem, but it uh, struck me that Hopkins has this first stanza where he's just wondering at how everybody does what they're supposed to be doing, that somehow in their nature to actually do what they do, whether it's a kingfisher catching fire or it's it's a, a drop of a stone or making waves on a pond. So it's very much a, a, a poem that looks at nature, that really looks at the environment. And it says things are happening, things are happening, everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And he notes in the fact that every person, or what he calls every mortal thing, does the same thing. It sells, he says, meaning that every one of us self enacts speaks ourselves into existence. The next stanza, though, is where I think the poem really kind of comes together. This is what Hopkins says in the poem. I say more, the just man justices, keeps grace that keeps all his goings graces, acts in God's eye what in God's eye he is, Christ. For Christ plays in 10,000 places, lovely in limbs and lovely in eyes not his, to the Father, through the features of men's faces. So what I love about that poem is Hopkins turns justice into a verb. Justice is not a concept or an ideal, but an interior action of a man or woman, a woman who lives for Christ or lives in Christ. And indeed, Hopkins suggests that we all harbor this grace that reveals itself in our own goings or everyday activities. I think that that's a great kind of tribute to Father Mike Garanzini. He is a man who justices. He is the just man who justices. And it's done in the ordinary, it's done in the everyday, just as Hopkins uh, attributes it. If you look around the features of Mike's face, we see the just man justicing in a lot of these everyday activities over the last 14 years here at Loyola. Whether it's in terms of starting a group at college, whether it's in the Institute of Environmental Sustainability, whether it's just kind of getting a conversation going with faculty about questions of justice and ethics, whether it's for the city of Chicago, uh, being really a, a voice for the city of Chicago, whether it's Jesuit higher education around the world. He's really helped nourish this justice thing in many organizations over the years. And it's always with great wisdom, and if you know him, great wit. Uh, and great agile ability to uh, help solve problems. He is the consummate problem solver. As someone who goes on vacation with him sometimes, he relaxes by solving problems, <laughs> by, by playing cards until he wins so many times with solitaire, by calling people up, and he really he relaxes by being engaged with others about the issues of the day, with people's lives, with people's interior lives, their spiritual lives, always a voice and he will talk to anyone as if they are the face of Christ. The other thing I would say about this justicing is that it, Mike is a pragmatist. If you've ever worked with him or known him, his is a practical justice. His faith and motivation is always grounded in the art of the possible. He has an uncanny sense at when to make the next move to further the mission, whether it's to encourage a new program, or to solve a problem, or to do assess assessments on things. He just has a way to kind of bring things together and do the nudge to go to the next level. He always, though, is about the art of the possible. And what I love most about watching Father Mike these last 14 years and continuing to watch him in his job as the Secretary for Higher Ed is that he really means to make everybody a winner. I've never seen a problem solver who really wants to make sure everybody wins. There are no haves and have-nots. There are no winners and losers. That mentality is really not part of his game. Finally, I have been impressed with how he has deepened the conversation here at Loyola around faith and justice. 
And I think a key contribution that I've witnessed in the last two years is how he has argued that the dyad, the dyad, the two words, faith and justice, really don't suffice in the Catholic intellectual heritage that we inherit and that we teach. It really must be faith, reason, and justice. We spent a lot of time in our last strategic plan trying to integrate those three words. We can't talk about a living faith without talking about reason and justice, he says. We can't talk about reason and the life of the mind without talking about the life of faith and the pursuit of justice. And we can't talk about pursuing justice without the power of faith and the clarity of reason to guide us. So Father Mike has really made this the foundation of our new strategic plan here at Loyola. How do we keep these three things in a healthy dialogue that energizes us to keep all our graces going? So to Father Mike, thanks for all you do.